Did you know you can power an LED light bulb with lemons? Let's get into it. Hey everyone, my name is Kelvin and I'm studying a Bachelor of Philosophy with honours here at the Australian National University. And today we're going to power an LED light with a couple of lemons. So for this experiment, we're going to need a couple of lemons. We're going to use one LED light, a couple of galvanised steel nails, one for each lemon, some strips of copper, likewise one for each lemon, and also some electrical cables to connect our lemons together. To test things, we're going to use a digital multimeter with two leads, and we'll get into how that works in a second. So to make our battery cells, we're going to start off with our lemon, and we're going to poke one side with our galvanized steel nail. On the other side, we're going to poke a piece of copper in, and here we have our simple electric cell. We can test that it works by using our multimeter. Now we're going to start off with the highest voltage. This allows us to determine our voltage range. So on this side here, we have a range of voltages from 500 to 200 milli volts. Okay, we're going to start off by placing our red lead to our positive copper and our black lead to our negative nail. And we can see that nothing shows up just yet. So that means we're a bit too high. To get a bit of a high precision, I'm going to turn it down to the 200 millivolt option. Now we can see we have a reading of 962 uh, millivolts. So that means our cell is working and we have produced voltage. Over here, I have a double A battery, which is actually 1.5 volts. So that means with two of these cells, we have equivalent of a double A battery. But with a lemon and our terminals, we can't do much just yet. We will have to make it into a circuit. So let's simplify our experiment with a diagram. I will represent the lemon as an oval, and then we have our nail and our copper. So when we connect them in series, we have a couple of cells. And what we're going to do is connect the positive terminal to the negative terminal of that, of the next cell, and then so forth. And now we have our two terminals that we can connect our LED light, which I'll represent by a curl in the bulb. This is our series diagram, and we can see that everything is all connected. So, it will, so the current will be able to flow in one direction. So how do we represent a parallel diagram then? I'm going to draw the same four lemons like we did earlier. And instead of connecting our negative terminal to our positive terminal, I'm going to connect all the negative terminals first. And then all the positive terminals. This is our parallel circuit. So if we connect, bring that out from the positive and bring it from the negative, we can connect our light bulb here. And we'll get a light bulb with greater current, but the same voltage. We'll be using the series circuit instead of the parallel arrangement, so that our light bulbs don't risk burning out due to more current. Now let's get into the real experiment. So now with another nail, a lemon, and our copper, let's set up a second cell. So like before, I'm going to push the nail into one end and the copper into the other end. And with our trusty pair of pliers, I'm going to secure the leads around the negative terminal of one lemon to the positive terminal of the next lemon. These pliers help me uh, make it a bit easier to tighten, but you can use your hands. And with my second lead, I'm going to secure that around the positive terminal, so the copper, and the negative terminal of a second of my second cell. Here we have it. So now we have two cells connected in what we call series, where we have the negative flowing to the positive and all around. So with that, we can now connect an LED bulb to it by connecting one end of another lead to the negative and one end to the positive. So like a battery, we have a positive and a negative end now. There we have our completed battery. Like any simple circuit, we need a load on it. 
for hours while going to use our LED light. You will notice that an LED light has a longer strand and a shorter strand. These correspond to the terminals. The longer one is our positive terminal, so that will connect to the positive side of the battery. And our shorter one is a negative terminal that will connect to the nail of our battery. So now we have two of these lemon cells connected together. It's connected at the back with the copper and the nail. And then we have two free terminals, like a battery. We have the negative nail, like the negative side of the battery, and the positive copper, like the positive end. And if I connect the positive terminal to the positive side, and the negative terminal to the negative side, let's see what happens to it. So I can't really see anything, but that doesn't mean that the circuit doesn't work. I'm going to instead connect the multimeter, and we can get a reading from it. So I'm going to connect the red to the positive side and the black to the negative side. And we can see that we have a voltage reading of 1,000, around 1,400 millivolts. So that's 1.4 volts. That's almost equivalent to our AA battery. We managed to nearly double our voltage output, but that's still not enough to power our LED. So what we're going to do next is add a couple more lemons to our series and hopefully we will produce enough power to produce a light. Okay, so here are two lemons we prepared earlier. Uh, this will help us increase our lemon cells, so we should hopefully see a uh, quadrupling in our power. Like before, I'm going to connect the positive to the negative of our previous two cells, and using pliers, I'm just going to tighten it in place. We now have five lemons connected in series. What do I mean by series? Like on the diagram before, we have these five cells connected in a line, like what would happen if we added more batteries end on end. And this arrangement here shows it best, as we can see that the negative goes through the positive to the negative and all around back to our positive. We can test to see the increase in voltage using our multimeter. So I'm going to connect the black to the end of the negative terminal and the red to the end of the positive terminal. And let's observe what happens to the voltage on our multimeter. And we can see it's around 2.9 volts. So our five cell battery had 2.9 volts, which is almost a four times increase of what we initially had. So I'm now going to complete the circuit with our load, our LED light by connecting the positive side to the positive end of the battery and the negative side to the negative. And we can see a slight glow now in our LED, but you might need to turn the lights off to see it better. Now that we have our circuit connected, we're going to try to turn the lights off to visualize the light better. You can see that it's glowing quite well now. And when I open the circuit, by removing the lead from one side of our LED, it turns off. Wow, wasn't that cool that we got an LED to light up using only lemons? Let's have a look at the theory behind it. So right here we have a series circuit, but we can also set up circuits in parallel where all the negative terminals are lined up and all the positive terminals are lined up. What do you think will happen when we test the voltage of this circuit? So like before, I'm going to take my positive red lead to the copper and the negative red lead to the nail. And we can see that the voltage is at 0.8 of a volt. So it means that the voltage is the same as one cell of a lemon. What happens if we test the current? So current is the amount of electricity that passes through our circuit. I'm going to get my digital multimeter and I'm going to turn it to DC current, which is the A here. So like before, let's start with the highest current we can measure. And turn it until we can get a precise number. So I'm going to start with 200 milliamps. And I'm going to place the red positive on the copper and the black negative on the nail. And we can see that we get a reading of 0.01. So that means it's a little bit too high at the moment. So now on the 2000 microamp setting, we can see that we get around 100 200 microamps or so. And when we compare it to one cell, one of our battery cells, 
which I have here. We only get around 50 microamps from it. So our current has almost quadrupled from our single cell to our parallel cell setup. So we can see that in a series circuit, our voltage is cumulative, but in our parallel circuit, our current is cumulative. Well, that was quite hard to make power from our lemons. So here are some tips to help make it an easier process. Firstly, you want to make sure that all the leads are clamped tightly to your terminals. So we had a pair of pliers that we used to make sure that everything was tightened down. You want to also make sure your nail and your copper wire is pushed deep enough so that the reaction happens. Lastly, try not to short your circuit. Shorting the circuit means you connect the cells so the power goes through your cells instead of into the circuit. So why are we getting power out of lemons? It seems a bit strange, right? We aren't making a perpetual motion machine though. We can't get infinite energy out. Instead, it's a chemical reaction between our copper terminal and the zinc on the galvanized nail, where it reacts and the ions change. This movement of ions is what produces our current and thus electricity. Here's some other things you can explore. What happens if you use different fruit? Maybe instead of lemons, you use a banana or a potato, or how about limes? What happens then? Can you power anything else with your lemon battery? I challenge you to go out there and explore. So have fun trying to turn your fruit into electricity. Mm -hmm.